Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. This is your brother, Coach Zubair. This is our episode number two on the series of being a confident and high value Muslim. So let's have a quick recap of what we covered last time. Before that, what we want to talk today is to deliver and having an understanding of what Islam truly is. Because if you think about it, look, if, if this is a business, right? Today, Amazon is a big business and it's making a lot of money. But it was a time when Amazon was not making money. Their cash flow was negative from a, from a revenue and profit perspective. So if somebody were to ask that CEO and say, hey, what are you doing? You're not a great CEO. Now, the reason that person would be saying that is because they have a limited understanding and they have a limited vision. They're thinking, oh, where's my money? But if they understand what Amazon was about on, in those early stages, then they would be evaluating the CEO, the one who is running the show, from a different perspective. So having the right perspective is very important. Most of the time, people do not understand Islam or they're confused about Islam is because they have the wrong perspective. So in today's episode, we will cover what is the right perspective about Islam? What is Islam? How does Islam see this world? What is Islamic world view? So let's have a quick recap on what we covered last time. So we discussed that why is being confident in your faith important? How you can be confident? And we discussed about the steps such as knowledge of Islam, company, being an expert, what value are Muslim, Muslims adding to the society? So today we'll be talking about how to present Islam and how to view Islam. So the first topic is, what are some of the signs of existence of God? Are you confident that thinking and believing that there is a God that exists? Is that a rational belief? Is that logical? Are you confident about it? So let's have a quick look at that. Well, what do you see in this picture? Is there a sun? When the picture was taken, was there a sun? Well, can you see the sun? So if you think about it, that sometime you may claim that, hey, you know what? There is a sun, it's bright daylight. Nobody would say, hey, how can you claim something that you cannot see? Well, there are signs that tell you that the sun was present when the picture was taken. What about this thing? So these are our you know, complex phones with you know, facial recognition feature and all that sort of stuff and all the research and development and, and design that goes into it that enables the camera to take a picture and then do the analytics behind it and match it with a, picture, with a face and realize, hey, this is such and such person and this is such and such person. Now, imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done. Just take a look at the eye and all the details and all the different components that go in the eye and how it connects with our brain to produce the picture and be, give us the ability to actually recognize that, hey, this is my mom, this is my father, this is my son, and so on and so forth. So aren't all these signs of the existence of God? Well, if somebody says that there is no God, the burden of proof actually lies on that person because everything else that we see in the community, in the society, we always attribute a designer, a creator behind it. Then why do we create exception when it comes to God? So that's our first key point for today's lecture. Now, the next question is, what is the Islamic worldview? How did we get here? What are we here for? And that is also very important, just like the example of the Amazon business that we gave, because in different stages, the CEO's evaluation would be different. So if you, if you look at Amazon's business in the early stages and you say, hey, why is it not making money? This is a stupid CEO that doesn't know what to do. Fire him. Well, you're missing the point. Now the metrics of CEO today will be totally different than what they were before. Same thing applies for any other thing like a business, someone who is actually studying, right? Somebody who's going to a university and studying for medicine. Somebody may say, hey, what are you doing with your life? Raise the money. My son goes to McDonald's and earns $20 an hour or $15 an hour. Well, you're missing the point. The perspective, the worldview of that person who is training to become a doctor is different than somebody who's going to McDonald's. So let's take a look at why and how Islam explains why did we get here. So this is a story of our creation. It's very important for us to study this story. It talks about, in, uh, in an essence, that at some point in time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had one creation. 
one type of creation. That creation was called the angels. And we believe that angels do not commit sins. They do not have the free will. They do exactly as they are told. Among them, those angels, there was one another type of creation that is called the jinn in Arabic language. And they are another type of creation that we cannot see them. We cannot see them, but they exist. Just like we cannot see many creations of Allah, but they exist. And then later on, we were able to see them with microscope and so on and so forth. The point being, there's another type of creation that has free will, and those are the jinns. And there was one jinn who was so pious at that time, was so worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he was hanging out in the company of angels. Now at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that I will be creating another creation, and that is human beings. The angels recognizing that he has free will, will be able to commit evil. They are were confused and they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why would you create someone who will cause corruption and bloodshed on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, look, I know what you do not know. So this problem that people bring up about, oh, why is there pain? Why is there evil in this planet? How can God let that happen? That's an old issue that was discussed at the time of the creation of our father, Adam, at, uh, at that time. Now, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something to show and make a point with them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, teaches Adam alayhi salam, our father, knowledge and information about different things. And then he asks angels, do you know about these things? And can you tell me the names of these things? And angels said, no, we only know what you have taught us and glory to be you. And you are the one that is, who is all knowing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then asks Adam to tell them the names. And Adam alayhi salam, tells angels uh, uh, all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught him. So take a look at this. Now the angels realize that, look, Allah knows way more than what, what, what they know. Obviously, they knew it before. I'm saying this is now established with a scenario, and they realize the superiority of Adam alayhi salam. So after that, now if you reflect upon this situation, you realize a lot of things. Look, we may only be thinking something from a very short, narrow perspective. So angels may be focusing on that, you know, the, the bloodshed that Adam will do and, uh, you know, the, the, the progeny of Adam will do and so on and so forth. But there's a bigger wisdom behind it. I mean, the amount of great things that human beings do, their care for each other, their sacrifice for each other, their gen generosity for each other, their love for each other, their love for Allah. They're sacrificing their own lives for the sake of Allah. They're standing up in prayers for Allah. They're teaching their religion for the sake of Allah. They're doing the charity, so and so, so much, so many things that human beings are able to do and they do it and then if you look at the evil the pain that human beings cause is not too much compared to the good that they are doing on this planet and also if you look at the the percentage of the human beings that are doing those evil things really really horrific uh, evil things is a very small percentage the really really horrible thing okay obviously everybody has their own issues and you know one way or the other people are uh, you know people do transgress in in, in general but they also do a lot of good, okay? Now also, there's another reason that we, uh, lesson that we learn here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that knows everything. And the, and, and the notion of submitting and trusting in the choices of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the angels did to, to see that, look, there's a bigger wisdom. I may be focusing on this narrow-minded uh, situation, but there's a bigger wisdom behind it. Okay, now this something interesting happens. Now, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes the superiority of Adam alayhi salam, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests the angels. I mean, there's no test for angels per se because angels by definition do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah said, you know, bow down, prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. Okay, as a sign of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and angels did not have any problem. Now, Iblis, the Satan, who had been worshipping Allah all along, you know, from what was apparent, now he sees a problem. He said, no, I can't do it because his arrogance was hurt. His ego was hurt. And he made a point about, it. oh, you know, I'm better than him. I'm created from fire. He's created from clay and all that sort of stuff. Everybody can come up with some sort of pseudo rationalization. That's what he did. But the point is, look, in, at some point in your life, you may be amazing. You may be doing good and pious and all that stuff. But sometime when you're tested with a situation, then your internal dynamics are exposed. Who you truly are from inside is exposed. And that's what happened with Satan. And this is something that can happen with us too, right? So you may, let's say you say, oh, this is my brother, she's my sister, and you know, I really wish good for him or good for her. And then when you see them getting a job that's way better than you, getting a house that's way better than you, or getting being married to someone that's way, and, and you're not married, right? Then you're like, wow, you know, and then and jealousy kicks in. At that point, you realize, hey, you know what? What was really inside my heart? Am I really and truly happy for him or her? 
And if not, then you can work on purifying yourself. So after that, as you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put Adam alayhi salam and created a wife for him. And they said, look, now you guys can enjoy in Jannah. You don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to go to university. You don't have to do part-time jobs, nothing. Just enjoy and leave this tree. Now that tree was a sign of a test. If Allah wanted, obviously he cannot, he, he could have chosen not to create a tree. But then Satan came in and kept, you know, making the false promises. He said, oh, if you eat from that tree, you'll become like angels. You'll live forever. You'll never die. You'll have a kingdom that will never, never perish. So he made, consistently made those false promises. And eventually the Adam alayhi salam uh, fall into that and he, uh, they ate from the tree. Now, at that time, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebuked them. And what they did was different from Satan. They realized their mistake. They asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them down on earth and said that, look, you will be living in this earth and you will see my, um, uh, you know, words is coming to you. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, <laughs> So get you all down on this land. And if my word says my guidance comes to you, whoever follows it will have no fear for the future no, and, no, and no, no grief for the past. Now, and whoever, dis, whoever chooses to disobey and deny and just follows his own desires or follows the fo false gods, that person will be the one who will be dwelling in hellfire forever. So what this gives us, brothers and sisters, number one, look, Satan will also come and keep making false promises to us. Oh, check this out once. Go try this place once. You know, hang out with these guys for once. You know, check out this substance. Check out alcohol. Just check out this drug. Just taste it out, right? That's how he does it. Always making those false promises. You're young. You can repent later and so on and so forth. Now, but main, main important thing I want to convey from this session is that to have the right understanding of this world. This, and this world is not a banquet that God has thrown and he's supposed to take care of everything. We are not guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world that everything should be taken, for, taken care of for us. And it's not something that, okay, do whatever you want. You're gonna, it's all going to end with death. Rather, it's a temporary place for training and development. You're being trained and you're developed and you're tested. So when you are being trained and tested, and if you, if you look at the world from that mindset, your, your perspective will change. That's why there's like ups and downs and trials and sickness and health and wealth and poverty and so on and so forth to see how you learn from those things. Will you be patient? Will you be grateful? Will you be generous? And so on and so forth. So as a recap, look, we talked about the signs of existence of a creator. How did we get here? What is the world of Islam and the tricks of Satan? So until next time, I'm signing off. This is your brother, Coach Zubair. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.